Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time it is going to be some Zodiac Kaijus versus Totally Awesome Heroes. Now, this is going to be the first of the games I play against my subscriber base that have, you know, done the things that they needed to do to get access to my Discord server to basically be a pool of people for me to draw, you know, a player base from in terms of me wanting to record games of certain decks versus certain decks and things like that. But for this video, I basically just wanted to test a very generic Zoo Kaiju deck against some of the old metagame uh, decks of this current format because I wanted to see like what stacks up in certain ways. And this list may not be the best, but it's something I just threw together to be sort of a rudimentary like representation of a Zodiac Kaiju variant that could see play in the, you know, the coming months because I believe the Zodiac Kaiju is probably going to be one of the more popular variants of this deck at least in the earlier months of Raging Tempest, just because the Kaijus are such premium removal and the deck is very streamlined into just doing your Momorat things. The only problem is it's very streamlined into doing your Momorat plays, meaning if something happens and your Momorat goes away, be it by like a DD Crow when you're trying to recycle it with Emerald or anything of that matter, if your string of Momorats is broken, then the deck really just kind of falls flat. So that's a big issue I see with this deck in general. But I do think that this deck has enough going for it to be one of the more basic representations of something that you would see at the beginning of the Raging Tempest format from people that don't really want to experiment too heavily with Zodiac hybrids and, uh, and basically going that route. But anyway, basically I'm not going to waste any more time here and we're just going to jump straight into the first game. But basically if you're curious as to how I'm choosing people to play with for these videos, they are my subscribers that have donated to my Patreon page. I mentioned that in a few videos back where I was going to be making a Discord server and I was going to be populating it with some of the most dedicated people that have supported me thick and thin and stuff like that. And basically, if you want to go check out my Patreon page to maybe get involved on the monthly giveaways that I'm doing, as well as maybe get access to my Discord server to be something that you could use to talk with me on a daily basis. And also, whenever I go in for games, for videos, most of the time I just go into my Discord server and say, hey, I'd like to get some games, or I ask, is anyone good with certain deck, X deck or something? And if people respond, then I play with them. That is the way that this works. But anyway, enough rambling on. Let's just not waste any more time and let's jump straight into the first game and see how it goes. Alright, so going into the first game, I won Rock, Paper, Scissors, so I get to start and I special Terra Top as my first action, which is always really, really strong. And then I just go into my Invoker into my Rat Pierre plays, or Rat Pierre. Yeah, is that his name? Rat Pierre? Yeah, because it's a rapier, but it's also a rat. Konami's really got to start working on these uh, puns that they do. But basically, a Zodiac Beast play takes shape, and I don't know what I'm playing against at this point, because we talked about multiple decks. We talked about Mermel, we talked about Hero, as things that could have been options. And both of those are functionally very different in terms of how I need to play against them. And so ultimately, I just try to meld as good a board as I can, try to draw into like things like Maxi or Ghost Ogre or Traps off my Giant Trainer. Ultimately, not really getting anywhere until my Thoroughblade comes down and cycles a card out of my hand and I draw into a Dimensional Barrier, and so that's really good. But ultimately, unfortunately, he does not have Treacherous Trap Hole in this list, or else that would have been immediately sent off that Rafflesia. This is a different build from what he plays for the rest of the video. He wanted to test a differing build, and that's why you see things like Dark World Dealings in there, which are kind of odd picks, but he wanted to test a different variation, and so... We basically he changed his deck list after this game. This was the first game that we played, and basically Treacherous there would have been really strong because he would have been able to pop my Drancia and my Emerald potentially or whatever else I wanted. Or the Emerald wasn't on the board yet. No, the Drancia and like something like the Giant Trainer or the Invoker, more than likely. Uh, but basically, the game just ends in my victory. But next game, he starts with a 10 Goldfish into a Bubble Man, into a Bahamut Shark, into a Totally Awesome, into Instant Fusion for another Bahamut Shark. For another totally awesome set a card and pass after resolving desires and I'm just like whoa my hand can't really cope with this because I don't have access to one a board wipe or two a Momorant and I have one Kaiju in hand but that doesn't deal with two toads and so at this point I try to make Drencia and then I try to set strike and I'm like alright I could possibly like get him here depending on like how this works me Drencia to force a toad and then strike the toad negate and stuff like that but Ultimately, it just doesn't end up working out in my favor, and I'm still staring down multiple toads. Now, I get very fortunately rewarded by drawing the smaller kaiju, and I special it over toad, and then special my own big kaiju, and attack his second toad, and I've got another card face down that I could use in the form of Twin Twister. Now here, he's trying to go into acid to lower my kaiju's attack, but so I see the play coming and make a really smart move, Twin Twistering, wasting cards, 
but twin twistering the mass change so that it goes to grave by game mechanic before the acid ever hits the board and thus the acid's effect destroys nothing means it, meaning it lowers my kaiju by zero points so at that point i'm just trying to use the kaiju to be my win condition because at this point i need i needs it but ultimately it just ends up just going away because i get treacherous and then he's able to follow up with toad on my tenki or twin twister is another card that he had so ultimately it's just not very good but now next game he goes first again a hero lives i chain max c and i'm surprised he didn't just go straight for the dark wall here especially since he had something like emptiness um i think that was probably just a mistake was that especially since he has the second shadow miss in hand already was that he probably should have just immediately dark lawed um and then flipped emptiness in like my standby phase but i end up interrupting kaiju slumbering and he emptiness is it but it's already active so it's going to resolve as much as it can meaning it destroys the board but it just will not special summon anything and so i just go into a rank 8 plus bear man because that's game and i basically he has a treacherous down but the emptiness is in the graveyard now so he can't activate it and so it was just it was a very one-sided game now there was a fourth game but i actually have a corrupted replay so i couldn't include it in the video but it was a bit unfortunate because it's a game where i just start popping off for no reason i actually just go absolutely crazy and special momorat six times in one turn um and it's just it's a little bit insane but so I start my turn with Interrupted Kaiju Slumber after he goes 10 Gold Fish into Shadow Mist and setting a card, and so I know the one set is Mask Change. And so then he goes Normal, Shadow Mist, Special Bubble Man as a follow-up, and I Solemn Strike it after, you know, clearing the board with the Kaiju Slumber and things like that. And so at this point, I just need to, I need to be able to draw into something. My top decks are incredibly high quality at this point, a lot more high quality than his are in this case because I have access to Tanky, Triangle, Terra Top, and all that, and I end up drawing into a Terra Top, which allows me to go into my Zodiac Beast playline. And so at this point, I know one of his back rows is uh, Mass Change. I don't know what the other one is, but at this point I'm just like, you know what, we're just going to go for it. We're going to see. We're going to see if we can have game here with the Gaga Samurai nonsense. Even if I don't have game, I've got two Kaijus in hand, and I've got Instant Fusion for the follow-up, and ultimately just ends up just being straight up game here on board. Um, without even having to use the Viper in hand on the Drancia, in fact. So, ultimately, uh, not very eventful set of games. I don't know how heroes could adapt to, with the uh, with the Zodiac Beast engine implemented into them. I mean, essentially, the Zodiac Beast engine is essentially, like, better Bubblemen in the essence of, like, how they establish your board further. But I don't know if, like, the hero engine would be able to, like, support that. Unless, like, the deck is legitimately just, like, three Shadow Mist e-calls and stuff like that. But I guess, like... You have things like Summoner Monk, which could do double duty to summon like Momorats from deck and stuff like that. So there is that as an option. I don't know. I'm not. Cu I'm really curious to see how like the hero deck in a general just like evolves with the essence of uh, with like the addition of the Zodiac Beast. So I'm actually really curious. But ultimately, that's it for this video. Uh, like I said, not too eventful, but I was kind of expecting to blow out like a match of like heroes anyway because this deck has Kaiju's and it has just very aggressive rap plays. So I mean. I don't know if the current hero deck, the totally awesome hero deck, can even compete with this kind of deck, especially considering, like, I mean, Dark Law is very inherently strong against the matchup because you start losing your Momorats at a certain point down the line, but ultimately it just, it, it seems like Drancia is just a huge problem card for that deck once it establishes, and then if the deck is playing Kaijus, that's another layer of just premium removal that it has for Dark Law. So I don't know if the deck has an inherently like good time or a potential good time against that sort of deck unless it adapts to include the Zodiacs itself basically. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And as I've already said before, if you want to be a member of the Discord server or if you want to be a part of the monthly giveaways that I'm going to be doing, you could definitely go check out my Patreon page and maybe consider donating after you check out the rewards tiers. Even something as little as a dollar a month just shows that you invest in like my ability to create content that you enjoy. It shows that you like my content, that you believe in my content, that you believe that I can keep creating content that is improving deeper into the future. And also it just helps me hit some goals and helps me possibly put more things onto the channel. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, what you thought about this video and any ideas for future games or mashups that you would like to see. And other than that, let me know what you guys think again and take care guys. I will see you in the next video.